before we can look at standing waves, we need to know what causes them and what produces them. And that is very simply a progressive wave. So I've sketched four, four parts of a cycle of a progressive wave. So you've got your first one here, and then each one we've progressed on by a quarter of a cycle. If you look at our progressive wave, maximum amplitude, the first one was there, second one, third one, fourth one. If you look at the minimum amplitude, see on the second one there, third one, and the fourth one. You can see on each diagram, both the negative amplitude and the positive amplitude are moving in that direction. So they are physically moving through space, transferring energy from one place to the other. So that is a progressive wave. What we can do is we can combine progressive waves using something called superposition. So if you have two progressive waves, and they are in phase like that, what they will do is they will reinforce. So when they interfere, they'll keep the same frequency, but those two positive amplitudes will make a significantly greater positive amplitude. Two negative amplitudes will again create a significantly greater negative amplitude. If they are exactly out of phase, we get something called cancellation. This is when we have interference, so we've got positive amplitude, negative amplitude, cancel out. Negative amplitude, positive amplitude, again cancel out, and we get no wave being produced, we get no amplitude in our resultant wave. So, standing waves from that point. Standing wave is characterised by having nodes and antinodes. So if you look at these four examples here, again, each one we've progressed by quarter of a cycle. Look at this first point here, we've got zero amplitude, zero amplitude, zero amplitude, zero amplitude. In the centre, again we've got the same thing, and on the right hand side, we've got the same thing. So those yellow points there always have no amplitude. These are called our nodes, so they are points of no amplitude. If we look here, in red, we go maximum amplitude, no amplitude, maximum negative amplitude, no amplitude. And here, negative, non, positive, non. These are called our antinodes, and these go from maximum positive to maximum negative amplitude. So it's a really key characteristic of our standing waves is we have points where we have minima and points that will oscillate from positive maxima, negative maxima. But it is always the same points in our standing wave that have these characteristics. Whereas with a progressive wave, every point at some point will be a positive maxima, every point at some point will be a negative maxima. In standing wave, there will be points that will be maximum negative and positive and points that will always be zero. What this means, if you are in a place where there is a standing wave present, you can experience, so let's say we were here and we were walking here past these yellow circles. So if we're walking in this direction here, we would experience, firstly, a node. Then we would experience anti-node, node, anti-node, node. So as we walk along, it would be node, anti-node, node, anti-node, node. What that would mean, if this was sound, we would have something that would be very quiet, then loud, then quiet, then loud, then quiet. If it was light, it would be dim, bright, dim, bright, dim. Again, if it was an electromagnetic wave, it would be minima, maxima, minima, maxima, minima. So this is something really key, and it's something they really like asking on standing waves, is if you've got a standing wave present, why do you get oscillating between something of minima, then something of maxima, minima, maxima, and so on? And it's because you're experiencing node, where you've got minimum amplitude, up to anti-node, where you'll be getting maximum amplitude. With our standing waves, we can make some equations out of them, and these come from our harmonics. So the harmonics depend on the wavelength of the wave and also the length of the string. 
So the first harmony you can make looks simply like that. So you have two nodes on the end, you have an anti-node, and this will oscillate from that position to that position. So this is our first harmonic. Key thing with standing waves is we should always be looking at having nodes on either end. So our second harmonic, again, node, should look like that. So we've got node, anti-node, this time we've got a node in the centre, and again that. That will oscillate between those two positions to become our second harmonic. Third harmonic would look like so. This time we've got three nodes present, and that would oscillate between that position there. And that is our third harmonic. The key thing with these is understanding the relationship between the wavelength and the length of the string. So for our first harmonic, we can see we've only got half a wavelength there. So the full wavelength will be twice the length of our string. In this situation, we are seeing a full wavelength, so the wavelength equals L. In this case, we've got one and a half wavelengths. So our wavelength is two thirds the length of our string. That's first harmonic, second harmonic, third harmonic. We can also apply our wave equation, c equals f lambda. So f will be c over lambda. And what we can do if we apply that into this equation here, we can say that the frequency of our first harmonic will be c over 2l. The frequency of our second harmonic will be c over l. And the frequency of our third harmonic would be 3c over 2. 